G'day everyone. As you may have seen in some of my recent mail time videos, I've been sent quite a few bladed spinners. Now with trout season only a week and a half away, I've decided to come up here today to Stanley Dam and just play with these spinners, do a bit of a product review, see how they go, and just have a bit of a look around. I'm actually up here four wheel driving with my wife today. We didn't come up here to go fishing, but I've taken the opportunity to take half an hour out of my day, put these new lures through their paces. Rightio, the first one you'll see me review or see me cast is this John Koo bladed spinner. This one was sent to me by Mick Sinclair in Aubrey. Now Mick can be found on Facebook. Mick's a really nice guy. This, out of the three lures I use, this one cast the furthest. It has the most brightest colour range, which means it's going to be very good for redfin and, and trout in the autumn. The only downside to this lure is I don't particularly, I don't know that I'm overly excited about the hook. It doesn't have a barb on it. I think I will probably be upgrading this barb to either a set of this hook to either a set of trebles or something with a bigger barb. In saying that, I won't be taking any action until I actually use it because I could be wrong. It's got a Colorado blade, which is like a round spoon shaped blade. It's very heavy and of the three lures that I use today, this one cast the furthest. It cast a mile, it spun very, very well and displaced a lot of water. It's bright colours. There is going to be redfin caught on this lure this season, I can tell you. As soon as the weather warms up, expect to see photos and videos from me of redfin caught on this John Koo bladed spinner by Mick Sinclair. It was awesome. Here's a little bit of footage of me using this lure. Have a look at how far it casts. Right here, yeah, this is Mick Sinclair's John Koo spinner. Let's see how it spins. Certainly casts exceptionally well. It's spinning very, very well too. I'm very impressed with this spinner. Some spinners on a big long cast like that, they won't spin until they're halfway back in. It's like the weight of the line prevents the spinner from working, but that has cast a mile. And as you can see just there, it's spinning very, very well. Cast a long way, it's nice and heavy, great colour range, and once again, it's spinning very, very well. But I'll reel that in now, that's answered that question. The John Q spinner from Mick Sinclair. Right, yeah, now the next cab off the rank is this from FTL Lures. This is a twin bladed spinner. You would have seen me un or open this up on camera a few weeks ago. A bladed spinner with two blades, a set of trebles. It was awesome. That's not actually the one that I cast out. I've got quite a few here. The one that I used today, or played with today, was this one. To be honest, I just grabbed one out of the box then and just realised that it's not the one. This is the one that I used that's still wet. Now this has got twin Colorado blades, the same as the John Q spinner, it's got Colorado blades, but this has got what's called hammered blades. Hammered means it looks like they've been hit with a hammer, they've got this sort of pattern around and it looks like they've been hit with a hammer. But that's the uh, FTL twin bladed spinner, it's got a little rubber skirt at the bottom and it's got two single hooks attached to a bit of string and through the water it actually looked like a dragonfly. I have to say this didn't cast as far as the John Koo. If it's a casting competition the John Koo wins. If it's a presentation competition I think the twin bladed FTL wins because it just looked incredible in the water. Both great lures, that one's better for casting, this one has a more of a, a better presentation I'm really looking forward to using this on both trout and redfin. I actually think with this rubber skirt and the single hooks, the way it came through the water, I reckon this is going to catch trout in the October, November time of the year when there's a lot of dragonflies around. It looked dope, as the cool people say. Right now I've just tied on one of these FTL twin bladed lures. These look really cool. I have to admit this is a first for me. I've never used twin bladed, bladed spinners. So this is a first. Interesting, it's got this little bit of string with a couple of tiny little single hooks here embedded into these streamers. That's just also a setup that I've never used. 
but I'm dying to see how this spins with twin blades. Oh, look at that. It actually spins quite well. That's awesome. Look at the tail on it. <laughs> I'll cast it out. Cast quite well. It's not the furthest casting lure I've ever used. In fact, the one I used in the last cast cast quite a bit further, but it still casts quite well. But gee whiz, it feels good in the water. Yeah, it feels awesome, it certainly looks awesome. It looks great with that little bit of tail at the back. I'm very impressed with that. That's the FTL spinner. What a ripper. Right, yeah, now the third one, the third and final one. This is the the Malewa lures from Dave Many. This isn't the actual one I used. I actually left that on my rod. It's in the car, but it's the same. This has got a willow blade. The willow blades have got a longer, skinnier blade. That's a flat willow blade. It's been hand painted by Dave. It's a handmade lure. I have to admit, when I first put it on, I've tried handmade lures in the past, and I thought. I really hope these guys work. Both of these are handmade, and I am more than pleasantly surprised by both of them. I am blown away. The Malewa Lua and the FTL, both handmade, both excellent lures. The Malewa Lua, it didn't cast as far as the others. It's a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter, but it still spun very, very well. The colours are fantastic. It displaced more than enough water to catch trout, and because of its more slimline appearance and its skinnier willow blade, I think the Malewa Lua will be better than the others in the smaller stream. Well, yeah, this time I've got one of Dave Menny's Malewa Lures. Malewa Lures. These are all homemade, these lures. How cool is this? That is what's called a willow blade. It's a long, slender blade known as a willow blade. It's a much more slimline looking lure. Not as heavy, so I suspect it won't cast as far. But it's got a similar shaped blade to one of my favourite spinners of all time, and that is the rooster tail. So let's just see how it goes. actually cast a lot further than I thought it would and it's spinning very well too how awesome are these guys making these homemade lures FTL lures Malewa lures they make these at home there's so many people making Murray Cod lures these days but not very many people making spinners that is brilliant that colour scheme looks amazing let's cast it over there towards the ambulance how many fish did you catch, Robbie? Oh, four or five. Where'd you catch them? Oh, just near the ambulance. <laughs> About 20 metres west of the ambulance. Dave Many, I'm happy to say that this Malua Lua spinner looks awesome in the water. It spins very, very well. I'm excited. Trout opening is less than two weeks and I can't wait because this lure looks really, really cool in the water. So to compare the three lures, the Malewa is going to work a treat in the smaller streams and in shallower water, but it will still work in lakes chasing redfin and stuff. The twin bladed FTL will probably need a little bit more water than the Malewa, but it's going to, it's going to be a really good trout and redfin lure. It presents exceptionally well in the water, casts quite well, displaces a lot of water. The John Q is just a casting machine. It flies through the air, probably nearly double the length of these other lures. Bright coloured, it's got redfin written all over it. The weather's about to warm up. We're in the last week and a half of winter and I'm excited.